In front, it's so dark out the bras has turned the house lights on low, giving the place the late night vibe of a cocktail lounge. Dom's still not in. Mamie's got to set up the bar and ask Roz and Nicolette to slice lemons and limes while he loves a couple of buckets of ice from the machine. The Bombay Sapphire's almost gone, and the doers. As he's restocking the bar back, he catches a car crossing the front windows in the mirror, the misdirection confusing, making him swivel his head to see who it is, and then pretend he hasn't, aware that Roz and Nicolette are probably watching him. It's not Jackie's fast and furious accord, but Dom's boxy gold brand man, so he can stop working on the bar and deal with the walk, already covered with the dusting. The snow is so dry he can do it with a broom. As he sweeps, he casually peers out over the mall lot, crawling with cars, their lights on to come at the gloom and the snow, falling steadily now, straight down. He doesn't have a coat on, and gradually the cold seizes him, stealing his breath, biting his fingertips, yet he takes his time. What would it mean if Jackie doesn't show up? That all of his memories of the two of them are untrue and more shameful than if they'd never happened. Because now he has trouble believing in himself. The day they took off and went to Lake Compounds and rode the rides all day, making out of the ghost room like teenagers. The morning they sat in the waiting room with the doctors, not talking. By now, these scenes have been stripped of their dialogue and motion. All he can recall are still images of her black hair wet and heavy from the shower, her stockings laid over a chair, a glass of water on the floor by her bed, holding the light from the window. Yet instead of weakening with time, they've grown more powerful, liable to paralyze him if he dotes on them too long. Part of him, the responsible, smarter part of him, wants Dina to be limitlessly happy, hopes she doesn't show up. What could he say to her anyway? Goodbye. Is that it? They tried that months ago. He used to marvel at the fact that out of the millions of people in the world, they'd somehow found each other. Whether it was by accident or destiny, there was all some logical cascading chain of events. Now, looking out at the snow falling on the darkened cars, he thinks it's an even bigger mystery and, like the lobster, a waste. At least she could have called, he thinks. But even that wouldn't have been enough. What would? He trades the broom for a bag of ice melter, strewing the white pebbles like chicken feed, watching them scatter and hop. They crunch underfoot a different slipperiness, and he thinks it would be fitting this last day if someone fell and broke a hip and sued the company. If it keeps up like this, the lot will need to be plowed, and he reminds himself to call them when he goes back in. For now, though, he likes being out here alone, salting the walk along the curb, following one wing to the far end, where he can watch the mall entrance like an advanced scout. A couple times, he thinks he sees her accord turn in, but with the distance and the cloud cover, every Japanese coupe could be a Honda, every dark power maroon, until the cars come closer and resolve into disciplining Hyundai's and Mazda's cut-rate imitators. On his way back to the middle, he notices the ice melter beginning to work on a tiny circle opening like a bullseye around each pilot. It's almost time. Even without looking at his watch, he can feel the seconds ticking off like a countdown. He's covering the other wing when a car pauses at the stop sign as if it doesn't know where to go, then keeps coming, following Dom's tracks, and turns in. A big, cheaply painted Caprice, probably an old taxi or cop car bought at auction, a real hoopty. He expects it to swing wide and take one of the prime spaces in front, but instead it keeps gliding by as if it's going around the building. He stops salting to watch it pass, standing tall as if he's guarding the place. There are two people in the front seat, a giant black guy driving, and beside him, a tiny brown girl with her hair pulled back and a diamond nose stud, Jackie. Being a nice guy, he raises a hand to wave. For a second, he believes she's looking right at him, her eyes flashing, asking him not to, and he falters, unsure. He freezes in mid-gesture, and that quickly, they're past him around the corner, dragging a swirling wake of snow, leaving him to contemplate the fresh imprint of their tires. He lowers his hand into the bag and keeps salting as if nothing's happened, sure that behind the blinds, everyone is watching.